Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the 10 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 1st of April, April Fool's Day. And uh, we'll be able to extend that beyond that with the Associate FS ECM Ensemble. They run to have a couple of weeks. Have a look at the CFSBT at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Get us into the second half of April now. And I shall get on back for you in a moment. Just say that first. A video of the same. So our 6 MPT will forecast with also these weekend forecast and the EC42 day as well. Check out all of today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that for Gals Weather. Well. Thank you so much, everyone. We need to put on around 93 free subscribers to get ourselves to 19.7k. Uh, so, if you can give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Hope you're having a lovely Saturday. Right, let's get on with it, man. Let's start off with the latest win from Matt from EarthNoSchool.net. Shame I got a chuff of low through the West of Europe app. The moment we're drawing up, but still quite a warm and humid southerly southeasterly flow. And that low pressure could spark off some heavy downpours some parts of the country this afternoon. Social temperature has gone back into the sevens. We're now sitting at 7.1. That's nearly one and a half degrees above 61 to 90, 90 average. It's provisional to yesterday to the 21st of March. These are the GFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, we're looking at Aberdeen today. So the red line is the third year upper air temperature average for Aberdeen. And we're signing off above average. <coughs> So sorry, everyone. Starting off above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment, but they're going to come down as we get into next week. And then hovering close to the long term 30 year average as we go through the closing days of uh, March and through the first week of April. Not a particularly big deviation. We have got a few cold outlier members appearing here towards the end of the last week of April. Um, now, of course, if wind goes into the north of the north east, Aberdeen will be first in line to uh, see that and, and to feel that. Um, so uh, there are some colder members there, but equally there's still some uh, bad uh, members up here. So uh, quite a bit of scatter. I think we probably will see a cooling trend for months then, but uh, I don't think it will be going particularly cold. Precipitation-wise... Well, here's the wet weather we've got at the moment. After that, though, it could be uh, quite a bit drier through the uh, last days of uh, March. And not overly unsettled, really, even into the beginning of April, to be honest. Temperature double is the next five days. That says that the bar's going to be above average. The 6 to 10 day temperature anomaly is close to average, but still slightly above. And the 10 to 14 day temperature, temperature anomaly is then uh, near normal. That gets us to the 5th of March. So there is a definite cooling trend here within the GFS um, after a warm start. Precipitation anomalies will be next seven days up to 29th of March. The drive and average itself, a little bit west of an average. Up in the north for 4 to 10 day, precipitation anomaly comes out driving average in most areas. And then the 8 to 14 day precipitation anomaly is again on the driving average side. So not particularly unsettled even if we do have a cooling trend going on. Okay, let's go through the chart days. Man. Starting off with the latest UK bet. You're a run for midnight on Tuesday. Nice little transient ridge from the southwest. Bring bringing a lot of dry weather through the middle part of next week. Just after a bit more unsettled towards the end of next week with lower pressure beginning to head in from off the Atlantic. Could turn things a little bit uh, showery, especially so for the north and the west there by the end of next week. But overall, quite a bit of high pressure for much of next week. I can't again build that high pressure up from south where there's lots of dry weather uh, then into the middle part of the week. High pressure remains in control. It's a bit wet and windy at the end of next week. And then another low coming in. <coughs> Sorry, sorry, once more. One double O coming in uh, next weekend. That gets a Saturday, 29th of March. Uh, and looking a bit wet, windy, particularly up in the north. Precipitation. Oh, what am I talking about? KMA. <laughs> the KMA looks like that again. Under a ridge. Um, but for a middle part of the week, then more unsettled at the end of the week. Uh, a rather wet and windy there by uh, next uh, Saturday to Sunday. 
uh, before high pressure starts reaching back in from off the Atlantic. All looking a bit mixed, I have to say. That gets us to the 3rd of April. The next low is heading in there. We're trying to build up a Scandinavian high, but really it's the energy for the Atlantic that's holding sway with that one. Ah, uh, we have a GFS midnight run. He's looking again flat as a pancake at the end of next week and into next weekend for high pressure builds quite strongly around days 9 and 10. That is day 10, Tuesday the 1st of April, under there is high pressure. That starts to go to Scandinavia. We bring the wind in from the east there as we go through to the 3rd of April, bit of an easterly. Um, and then maybe signs of high pressure start to pull out into the Atlantic. But to be honest, a lot of high pressure influences there for the GFS Midnight Road all the way up to the 7th of April. It does not look particularly unsettled by any means. Maybe turning cooler with those easterly winds through the first week of April, but not cold. The GFS 6 there by comparison, again with that ridge of high pressure through Tuesday, Wednesday, flattened it off on Thursday and Friday, turning a bit wet and windy then into next weekend, mostly dry myself, unsettled though, further north, then high pressure building quite strongly around just after a day 10 for putting out into the Atlantic. Now, that looks a little bit more interesting. That's the 4th of April. We're a long way out now. A high pressure in the Atlantic, mid Atlantic ridge, and winds going into a north or a northeasterly a direction there. So, perhaps becoming colder through the first week of April with shells, long spells, rain into the north and the east. That's how long as we get to the end of GFS 6 then. Gets us to the 7th of April. So, winds are in from the east. Um, Not much in the way of normal blocking. There's no real sign here uh, of a tropospheric response to the strap warm up to the 7th of April with the GFS there. Yes, we do have a bit of mid-Atlantic region, but certainly wouldn't say there's any particular uh, northern blocking uh, conditions in evidence up to uh, that point. So, the wait to see if we get a tropospheric response to the strap warm goes on. Well, just say that if you're enjoying the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to show everyone for doing that. And why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc, etc, etc. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gals or whatever it is. Get them to subscribe too. Which shows everyone for doing that. About 93, 94 subscribers gets us to 19.7k. And if you enjoy the content on the channel at the moment, please can you consider giving a donation to uh, Gav's Weather Vids. That'd be absolutely awesome. Can do that via our PayPal page. So a link to our PayPal page is in the description with the video. It's just down there. <laughs> um, so uh, click through the link, go to PayPal page, sign up to PayPal account, and donate whatever you would like Gals, where is it's helping us to pay for the content for the channel? <clears throat> we are primarily ads funded, of course, but uh, this time of the year, due to uh, a general drop of uh, you know interest and views and whatnot, the ad revenue goes down quite a bit. So, um, we need to make that up somehow or other, and uh, one of the ways that we do that is through uh, the PayPal page. So, thank you so much, everyone, for a uh, dear about. You can also uh, give a donation uh, via Super Thanks, Super Chat on the live stream, and of course, hello to our lovely, lovely channel members as well. Hello to the channel members. Thank you so much uh, for being channel members for Gavs or Weather Feeds. So, thank you so much, everyone. That's absolutely awesome. And uh, uh, again, if you do give a donation, we'll give you a shout out in the video, by the way, um, if you want one. So, uh, you know, uh, we're happy to shout you out. Maybe you want to plug for your business or, you know, want to, want to send a message to somebody. <laughs> we have had that uh, before, uh, you know. Uh, so if you'd like to do that, um, then, uh, then uh, have Gab pass on a message to a loved one, a hating one. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, you know, happy to see that uh, if you give a donation. So thank you so much, everyone. Right, let's move on then, shall we? Getting a little bit giddy. Let's move on then. <laughs> uh, we're gonna maybe not a hated one. <laughs> I could 
try. I can try. Um, no, we're going to start off with a camp with uh, the GM now. GM, high pressure reaching up from the southwest. I should have gone off on that tangent, should I? <laughs> um, high pressure reaching up from the southwest. Uh, bringing a lot of dry weather through the middle part of next week. Then turning more unsettled at the end of next week. Um, winds are switching into uh, the north. I don't know what I've let myself in for there, honestly. Uh, winds switching into the north next week. Okay, so becoming colder via that mid-Atlantic ridge. And then high pressure pushing through the country, going up towards Scandinavia. Uh, and that's how we look at by the 1st of April. Probably quite chilly under that area of high pressure with some overnight frost. But starting to settle down. He's getting back on track. Um, the East, yeah, but looks like that. So high pressure uh, ridging up from the southwest around the middle part of the week. Uh, then to the end of next week, it begins to turn a bit wet, windy in the northwest, mostly dry, though, down in the south. And then we get through to um, the, uh, the 31st March, that's day nine, back under a little ridge. So a lot of high pressure, a lot of dry weather from the south anyway, north will be. A little bit more unsettled. Into the beginning of April, the high pressure goes to Scandinavia, brings the wind around to the east. Now, that might be a trouble. So, it's most of a shaft straight warming. Scandinavian highest can result after a strap warm. Equally, like early April, tends to be a time when we get Scandinavian highs anyway. So it's impossible to know whether that would have happened without, with or without the, the, the strap warm, you know, because it's that time of the year. Well, beyond that, uh, we start looking increasingly blocked, actually. So the ECM may be starting to enter a troposphere response to the strap warm. Uh, we begin to raise the heights toward Greenland and Iceland there. Maybe a bit of a, bit of a hint of retrograding the high pressure <laughs> um, but right at the very end. So that is more like it. That That is definitely more like it. It's the only model that's doing this, though. Um, but the ECM is building up some high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. I think if that came off, we would probably say that more than likely is the tropospheric uh, response to uh, the sudden stratospheric warming event. But again, bear in mind, that's all after day 10. So it's a very, very long way out and probably, you know, may verify, may not verify, very difficult. Um, to know. But the ECM today is looking increasingly increasingly blocked. A may hint that uh, we're starting to see signs of a troposphere response to the strap warm. Uh, this is how the precipitation forecast looks up to day 10 from uh, Tometra.com. So lots of showers to come this afternoon and this evening. They fade into southeast tomorrow and then plenty of dry weather really, especially for the south as we go through uh, next week, a little bit wet and windy by the end of next week into next week, um, and then we're back to those dry conditions again by day 10. These are the yachts on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10. Uh, gets us from the Icelandic Met Office, gets us to, to the 1st of April. 14 members of the ECM ensemble with a ridge building up from southwest, low pressure out of Greenland, Iceland, and which actually in wind doing something like that. 11, we're putting low pressure coming in. From uh, off the Atlantic, we've got nine with a nice ridge building for the west of Europe. Uh, we've got a further nine with the ridge more focused in the Atlantic. That brings down a little bit more of a northwesterly. And then we've got eight between uh, with high pressure between Iceland and Scotland. And that will bring down a chilly northeasterly, I would have thought. Most of the options seem to involve high pressure some degree uh, at day 10 anyway. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It'll get us to the 6th of April. 15 members of the ECM on top of a trough of low pressure through the west of Europe. Some sort of block away to the north east. That looks quite unsettled. Probably a bit cool as well with winds coming in from the northwest. Got 14 with high pressure ridging through the country and going up to Scandinavia. Mostly dry back winds in from the east. Remember, in April, east winds aren't going to be overly cold. Uh, 11 with high pressure over the country. I can be mostly dry and fine. And then another 11 with more of a mid Atlantic ridge. And around that, we probably bring the wind in from the northwest. That could be a little bit colder. I have to say. Uh, again, a lot of the options seem to be involving high pressure, though, at both day 10 and day 14. So no sign of anything desperately unsettled, I don't think, um, into April.
So first week two, and then we're done. These are five hundred millibar height on. Just break it down into week pairs. The first week pair taking us from the 22nd, 28th of March. Next week with plenty of high pressure from the Atlantic into northern and also western parts of Europe. Week two looks more unsettled. It's the 29th of March, 4th of April. Low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. Then looking quite unsettled. Week three <laughs> will be the 5th to the 11th of April. High pressures from the Atlantic into Northern Europe. Winds coming in from more of an easterly direction then. And uh, finally, week four is going to be the 12th to the 18th of April. High pressure focus around Greenland and Iceland then. So that is like Northern blocking. Low pressure down towards Spain. This could be a very wet April for Spain um, and Portugal. <laughs> uh, not good if you're having an April holiday down to the Med or what not, probably. Uh, but for us, anyway, uh, we're going to like bring in the wind again from the east. Again, easterlies are not going to be especially calm at this time of the year. So, uh, the high pressure, if you want it cold in April, and who does, but if you do, the high pressure is going to go and set up and centre around there. And that we bring down like a north or northeast sleep. Then we can still get it cold from the north and from the north end in uh, in April. But like easterlies usually are particularly cold as there isn't a cold source of air uh, over the continent. That's usually the case. There are exceptions, of course, to that. So <laughs> I'm sure somebody in the comments might be able to come up with an exception of like a, a very cold easterly wind in April but more often than not nine, nine times out of ten it will be like a northerly that delivers cold weather in April rather than easterlies so we'll wait and see anyway right we're done if you've enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe thanks for everyone for doing that Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live stream, etc., etc., etc. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weather. Get to subscribe to Thanks to Joseph Wood for doing that. If you can afford to give a donation to Gals Weather Vids, uh, please consider doing that for us via our PayPal page. And we'll give a shout out in a future video if you want. Right, tomorrow, we're going to have a 6am UK weather forecast. We'll have the next update, I think it's update number three for summer. And if all of that wasn't enough, we'll be live at 6pm, but we attend a 14 day, and I'm sure we'll throw in, throw in some uh, long range with that as well. So uh, keep checking back to the channel for more. For this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.